Hello, hello, hello. This is an example problem that is related to average normal stress and average normal strain. We're asked to consider a solid cylinder. Okay, solid. I think I'm going to do this in black ink. A solid cylinder. Okay. It is made of an unknown material, but we know that the radius of the cross section is one half inch. So I'll add that in right here. So this little radial measurement here, 0 0.5 inches. The two little quotes mean inches. <clears throat> Problem says that the undeformed length is four feet. So let's get that into our picture as well. Okay, so if we want to measure from here to here, that is uh, four foot zero inches. And I can go ahead and convert that to inches just by multiplying by 12. So I'll show up both ways there, 48 inches. All right. When placed in a material testing machine and subjected to axial tension of 20 kips, okay, let's add that into our picture. So we're asked to subject this to axial tension. Um, note that for tension, my arrowheads are pointing away from the body. That's how we define tension. And we see that the cylinder elongates or lengthens to four foot one inches or 49 inches. So if we were to slip into some of our notation here, we could write things like the original length was 48 inches. The deformed length was 49 inches. The deformation, which is the change in length, is one inch. Okay. This problem asks us to first construct a free body of the cylinder. That part's already done. It's kind of what we were doing live. And after that, we want to do two computations, average normal stress and average normal strain. Okay, so before we get into that, I have a simple little CAD model in the other tab, and I wanted to mention something. All right, so this is kind of what I want the mental picture in your head to look like. So there is our solid cylinder, a little testing sample of something or another. Material is unknown. And I have these equal and opposite force vectors at both ends. That's indicative of axial tension. Now, engineers only draw in 3D or build a CAD model when we have to, right? So I'm doing it here for teaching purposes. But it would be just as correct, if not more so, to do this. Draw that free body in two dimensions. Okay, there's no need to use 3D unless you really have to do so. Okay, let's put that 20 kips of force. Kip, of course, is kilopound or a thousand pounds. Run that through the member and maybe a little bit of dimensional information. So we can do our 48 inch length. And in terms of the other piece of information, that five inch radius, we could just label this and say, you know, cylinder comma radius equals 0 0.5 inches, right? That drawing that we did just there tells me the same information as this drawing did. Okay, same information. Except a lot cleaner 
and a lot easier. So this was the way that I will recommend that you do your free body. You're welcome to draw in 3D if you want to do so. It's just not necessary. All right, I'm going to pop some axes on. So I'll just put X and Y there. And my first bullet instruction, construct a free body, is done. Is it in static equilibrium? Yes. So I'm running through all six equations of equilibrium in my head. I am in static equilibrium. Check. Let's go to the next one. Compute the average normal stress. All right. So we have learned this equation, sigma equals n over a for the average normal stress. And you don't often see this with this average subscript. You're welcome to use it if you would like, um, but it's often not there. So it's often expressed just in this format. And um, this one, we're kind of ready to plug and chug through this. So we know the normal force is 20 kips. And you know this is an applied force here. What I'm really interested in is like what is happening at a cross-sectional plane. In other words, if I were to take this free body diagram right here, edit, copy, merged, and paste. Okay, so if I were to take a, a uh, cut right there through that free body, I need to place my free body in static equilibrium. That's how I can determine that my internal normal force is 20 kips of tension by running my equations of equilibrium on this little piece of the member. Okay, I'm running out of space, so I'm just going to go down a line here and plug in. So in the numerator, we want to do 20 kips. In the denominator, what area do we want? Well, we want the area of the cross-sectional plane, right? So in other words, we want the area of this circle, this is the cross-sectional plane right here, the one that's kind of got the blue dots on it now. Um, that is the area we want, the area of the cross-section, because that is the plane that the internal normal force is normal to. Right, so down in the denominator, area of a circle, pi times radius squared. And the radius is given as 0 0.5 inches, square all that, run this through your calculator, and uh, let's report this one to three sig figs, since it's kind of like our final answer, and you should get 25.5 KSI. Now, in terms of the sign convention, there's two ways to do this. Okay, so your first option is to use a positive sign, plus 25.5 KSI. The other way to do it, this is a little more emphatic, and therefore this is usually my preference. You could also do 25.5 KSI of tension, so use the little t in parentheses to indicate that that is a tensile stress, kips per inch squared. Okay, that is it for the first part of this problem. Let's go to that last bullet. That last bullet asks us to compute the average normal strain. Okay, so we know that we define our strain epsilon. That is the ratio of axial deformation delta to undeformed length L. And you'll recall that we had already tabulated that before I erased my 3D drawing. The length, the undeformed length was 48 inches. The deformation was one inch. And since that is an elongation, that would be a positive one inch. If we were inducing compression in our sample rather than tension, you would just change that to a minus sign. All right, let's plug into this simple, oh, subscript. Yeah, so this one, just the same way, you could write average there. Many people do not. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it if you want to write it there. That's fine. It absolutely is an average normal strain, um, but it is not customary to write that particular subscript. Okay, in the numerator, I've got my one inch. Denominator, I have my 48 inches. We are going to... Um, Compute this ratio with a calculator and with three sig figs. 
in our final answer, the best way to express this is 20.8 E minus three, be sure you're using engineering notation, not scientific notation. And the units for strain are a little weird. It's technically a unitless quantity, but it is very, very common to see that answer expressed in inches per inch. This is a positive value. The reason why both stress and strain for this problem are positive is because of the axial tension. If we had compression, all of these signs would turn out to be negative. That's the end of this video.